Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Ed Schlesinger. I'm the Benjamin T. Rome Dean of the Whiting School of Engineering, and it is my great pleasure to welcome you to this installation of Muinat A. Bell, known as Baizi, uh, as the John C. Malone Professor. Thank you all for being here today to help us celebrate this very special occasion. And I'd like to make a very special welcome to Baizi, her husband, Ronaldo, uh, as well as the family and friends who are here with us, and all of our speakers in today's program. So welcome. And I would also like to point out that in addition to uh, guests, uh, we're very honored to have Provost Sunil Kumar uh, join us here to help with this important celebration and recognition, and to take part, as you will see, in the formal acceptance of the chair uh, by the Johns Hopkins University. The installation of professorship is a particularly wonderful moment in the life of an institution. It allows us to recognize the generosity of our friends, as well as the distinguished career and great personal devotion of a particular faculty member. Although he's not here in person, I want to recognize the critical investment that Dr. John Malone has made in the future of our school and in our ability to effect positive change in the world by supporting the Malone Center for Engineering in healthcare and allowing us to encourage the work of our most promising young fa faculty members, faculty members like Baizi. A little background on John Malone. He received his master's degree from Johns Hopkins in industrial management in 1964 and his PhD in operations research in 1969. Throughout his career, Dr. Malone has combined the superb analytical abilities shown in his doctorate work with intense business acumen to create large enterprises. He is chairman of Liberty Media Corporation, Liberty Global, and Curate Retail Group. These are amazing companies with an extraordinary range of media, communications, entertainment, and digital commerce business. Beyond his business success, Dr. Malone has had great influence on society through his philanthropic initiatives. His generosity to Johns Hopkins is already making a huge difference with these professorships and also the Malone Center. The Malone Center for Engineering and Healthcare takes advantage of Johns Hopkins University's history of excellence at the intersection of engineering and medicine. It was established in order to enable the most important advances in 21st century medicine and healthcare, which will re rely upon close collaborations between clinicians, scientists, caregivers, and engineers. The Malone professorships and the Malone Center for Engineering and Healthcare recognize the tremendous potential that exists at the intersection of engineering and healthcare. What makes the Malone professorships and those that are appointed this title so unique and so meaningful is that they give us the opportunity to look beyond the confines of our respective fields, sparking innovation and support across the institution. Uh, we are live streaming this event, and perhaps John Malone has joined us. And so John, in case you're listening, we are very grateful for your generosity and commitment to the Whiting School over many years, and especially in this moment today, we honor you for creating the John C. Malone professorships. Thank you. And now to our honoree, Baizi. A number of people are going to speak on your behalf today uh, and also to congratulate you for this distinctive honor. But let me be the first to officially say congratulations on this well-deserved honor. Your work is truly transformational and is changing healthcare for the better in exactly the way the Malone Center and Malone professorships have aimed to do from the start. We're very proud to have you as a member of the Whiting School family. Because the endowment for a professorship is held and administered by the university trustees, uh, professorships are formally presented to the university. The Pro Provost Kumar, if you would join me here at the podium. I do love the ceremony, I have to tell you. As Dean of the Whiting School of Engineering, I formally present to you as Provost of the Johns Hopkins University, the John C. Malone Professorship and Dr. Muinat Bell as the inaugural recipient. Thank you. 
It gives me great pleasure to accept the John C. Malone Professorship on behalf of the trustees, the president, and Johns Hopkins University, and appoint Dr. Bell as the inaugural recipient. That's it, my job's done. <laughs> no, I'm a seasoned bureaucrat, so I'm going to talk for a bit. Uh, uh, so um, I, I have, there are some prepared remarks here, but I won't read them. I, I want to do what I do in every chair ceremony, although in this ceremony, I feel that it will be less necessary. So my job is to imbue the recipient with a deep and abiding sense of guilt. We have very few chairs at Hopkins. And for us, this is a great honor. Our, this tradition of awarding a chair goes back to Osler, who was one of the four doctors, who in honor of his son, who died in World War I, named a chair in the English department. So the tradition here is over 100 years old of giving these chairs. And um, lots of people don't have chairs, including me. I don't deserve one. Um, so therefore, you should treat the chair as if it was a gift from your favorite uncle. And must treat this with, um, uh, and use it to, as Ed just said, not just do well, but do good. And the reason I feel it's not necessary in this case is one of my let's just say onerous duties, is to read every promotion dossier that goes through the Homewood Academic Council. Andreas is laughing because he knows that I'm right. Occasional, occasionally, I read a dossier that doesn't feel like an onerous duty. It feels like just genuine pleasure. And Dr. Bell's dossier was one of those. And so given that, I think you will treat the chair like it was a gift from your favorite uncle, and you will make the university proud. Congratulations. Thank you, Provost Kumar. I'm now going to introduce and welcome to the podium Andreas Andreu. Originally from Cyprus, Andreas earned his diploma in electrical engineering at HTI in Nicosia, Cyprus, and went on to receive both master's and doctoral degrees in electrical engineering and computer science from Johns Hopkins University. Andreas is a professor of electrical and computer engineering and is the co-founder of the Johns Hopkins University Center for Language and Speech Processing. Andreas. So, well, good afternoon. Welcome, everybody. It is truly an honor to have been asked to say a few words this afternoon here. I and celebrate the uh, professor Lady Ju Bell's technical achievements and installation as a John C. Malone professor in the Name Center. I cannot think of any other faculty member that is more of deserving of this award. I'm sorry, I have to do this. I can't see there, I cannot see here. <laughs> Her pioneering uh, research on photoacoustic imaging and machine learning is in the forefront methods for minimally invasive surgery. In a recent invited publication, perspective titled Photoacoustic Imaging for Surgical Guidance, Principles, Applications, and Outlook, published in the Journal of Applied Physics, BioC outlines a roadmap and articulates the challenges in the field. After technical description and a tutorial of methods and application, she considers laser safety and argues that beyond technical and technological challenges, there are regulatory challenges that need to be met before seeing the research having a broader impact and translational clinical impact. Identifying and removing translational barriers is a vital ethos in the Malone Center and by C is already making seminal contributions. Congratulations, by C. Professor Bell, or as most, uh, Professor Ledichu Bell, or as most of us know here as by C, 
has recently been promoted to the rank of associate professor with tenure in the electrical and computer engineering department and has been elected in the College of Fellows in the American Institute of Medical and Biological Engineering. This is, this is an honor bestowed to those who have made outstanding contributions to engineering and medicine research practice or education. In the last 10 years, only four of the 1,500 fellows elected have been assistant professors. I say congratulations again. Let me say now a few things by C as a colleague. It is an honor and it's a, a pleasure to have you as a colleague in the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering. While serving as a chair of the Interregnum in Electrical and Computer Engineering, it was always a nice to receive your carefully written and articulated email response to queries on departmental matters. She's a deep thinker. Clearly not your typical Mylenian. In an era of social media frenzy, one-liner emails and texts full of acronyms, it was refreshing to receive insightful commentary from someone that took the time to think and ponder on the subject matter under consideration. And then there were these Friday six o'clock phone calls. Uh, during the darkest day of COVID, of COVID uh, the latter part of 2020 and the early part of 2021, by C call on a regular basis to check in and find out how myself and everyone else in the department was doing. By C is deeply compassionate and a spiritual person who cares about her students, colleagues, and staff. In a brief get-together over the weekend for tea and cookies, I had the privilege to meet in person her family, spouse Ronaldo, brother Abdulrahman, uh, and the two nephews, Gabriel and Alicia, <laughs> that came down from New York for this occasion. I learned about her high school, Brooklyn Tech, a highly competitive public magnet school with notable alumni name that includes physicist and Nobel laureate Arno Penzias, inventor of what is considered the first self-contained camera, Stephen Sasson, and inventor and businessman and famed Olympian, Meredith Gurdin. Abdar, Abdul Rahman beamed with joy as he talked about his younger sister and their high school days. And then by C talk about her mother, who a nutrition specialist and advisor to the public, public school system, she gave them firm foundations of the value of eating well. A good breakfast before school was always on the table. So I will conclude uh, this presentation, this brief uh, remarks with a few verses from my favorite um, poem Ithaca by Konstantinos Kavafis, taking to the liberty to paraphrase some of the verses. So, by C, as you continue your journey for Ithaca, hope your road is a long one, full of adventure, full of discovery. Keep Ithaca in your mind. Don't hurry the journey at all. Better if it lasts for years, so you'll be old at the time you reach the island wealthy with all you have gained on the way, not expecting Ithaca to make you rich. And if you find her poor, Ithaca won't have fooled you. Why says you have become so full of experience, you have understood by then what this Ithacas mean. I see, thank you and bravo. Thank you, Ed. Thank you, Provost Kumar. So I don't like talking behind podiums, so I'm going to transition over here and say, you know, it's an honor to be here and to be the recipient of uh, this professorship. 
the scientific journey, it definitely takes a village and the history leading up to today's installment is one of the latest manifestations of that in my life. So with this in mind, it is my pleasure to be here with all of you to celebrate this occasion. I'm honored to be here and I'm grateful to be the recipient of the John C. Malone Professorship. With its connection to engineering and healthcare, this is particularly meaningful for me because I've identified engineering in healthcare as my singular area of focus since high school. So dissecting this focus, engineering in healthcare, starting with engineering, it has always been amusing to me that I went to a high school and a college which both shared mascots of engineering. So I was a Brooklyn Tech engineer before I was an MIT engineer. And it seems rather fateful that I am an engineering professor today. On the topic of healthcare, when I was being recruited to Hopkins, although I had many attractive offers to start my professorship, I remember when Dean Ed Schlesinger told me that I should choose Hopkins because healthcare was a major part of his vision for the future of engineering. And that rings ever so true today. And I'm so glad that I made the decision to join. For those who do not know, I came here as a postdoc. And I remember when Malone Hall, the building that bears the name of the donor of my professorship, initially did not exist. And then it started being built built. I also remember when the Malone Center was simply just a vision. As I said, I was a postdoc at the time, and I was actually working in the building next door, Hackerman Hall, and I was desiring a faculty position with Hopkins being one possibility. So as the building was being built over the three or four years of my faculty search, I humored myself as I drove into work each day and I would see the daily construction on this new building and I thought to myself, oh, they're just building my new office over there. <laughs> I also remember signing my name on one of the beams that were put in the building as one of the groundbreaking exercises. And so in my mind, I am integrated into the building. And I literally made my mark on it, even though I did not end up with a faculty office there. I did, however, end up with a nicely renovated office and lab sp space that worked just as well. And I did have the pleasure of being here each day to oversee the renovation project for my lab, just like I saw Malone Hall and the Malone Center come together. So this professorship is now one more connection to the history of the building and the center for me. When I mentioned this professorship to my family and friends outside of academia, many of whom are here today, thank you for joining with us and joining online, one consistent response was, what exactly is a professorship? They were probably thinking, I thought you were already a professor. And this question always took me aback and required me to stop and think of the best way to explain it because I imagined that it was perceived as yet another award that I'd be winning, but something was a little different because I requested their presence at this installation ceremony. But I also could not put my finger on the best way to explain it beyond that. In that moment, I realized that I'd been so immersed in the academic culture that it was not simple for me to explain what this was and the significance of this moment. In order to arrive at an explanation, I first reflected that I personally also did not understand what it was, and I came to understand the importance after attending ceremonies much like this one, and after participating in faculty searches for my fellow Malone chairs. As I reflected, I recalled that once I 
did not understand and then started to understand, my curiosity grew from what is a professorship to what does it take to receive one. After asking multiple colleagues at Hopkins about their professorships bearing the names of other donors, and after talking to multiple colleagues at other universities who also had professorships, I can report today that I received a wide range of responses, and I learned that there are multiple routes to an endowed professorship. There are multiple excellent reasons why professors are honored. And ultimately, there is no singular unified awarding process across institutions. That being said, one common message I received from many I asked was that with time, I would receive one too. I honestly did not know that the time scale would be as short as it was. <laughs> because it seemed like something mostly bestowed upon full professors who have a higher rank than my current rank of assistant, soon to be associate professor. So now we are all gathered here today, a year after I received the message from Dean Schlesinger that he wanted to award me with this professorship on February 5th of last year, 2021. In speaking to other endowed professors at Hopkins during the exploratory investigation that I mentioned, another common thread was they each received a phone call from their dean at the time to be awarded a professorship. I have a different story to tell, however, because I did not receive a phone call from the dean. Instead, I received a Zoom call from the dean. <laughs> and depending on how long Zoom stands the test of time, this will either be the new common theme or it will really date me. Either way, I will be forever grateful. I am also grateful for the opportunity to celebrate this achievement in person with all of you. I've been putting off this celebration for over a year, first due to scheduling conflicts, Second, due to not wanting yet another virtual event. And at one point, I also delayed because the number of people allowed would have been restricted due to the pandemic, and I did not want the task of explaining to some people why some were invited and others weren't. So there's a case to be made for waiting until the right moment in this, in this regard, and I'm glad I did. It means a lot to me to gather here with all of you to join in person with a virtual option for those online too. So for those who were wondering, what is this Malone professorship? I hope you have a better understanding from attending this event. And I also have a better answer than my original response, which was it, it is a distinction on top of the honor that I have of already being a university professor and it provides a stream of funding to support me to pursue my greatest and riskiest research ideas. All of this is still true. And with this installation ceremony, there is now more context to appreciate that the funding support is derived from a gift from John C. Malone, who Malone Hall and the Malone Center are named after, and my dean, Ed Schlesinger, who you heard from earlier, my department chair at the time, Andreas Andreu, who you also heard from, and several of my ECE colleagues all advocated, selected and supported me to receive this gift. I can also relate it to my extensive trophy case, medals, <laughs> and multiple certificates that I received as I progressed from grade school through middle school and high school. Granted, these were spelling bee trophies, student of the month certificates, and medals and trophies that I won as I captained my high school track team through multiple victorious races. In my academic environment, as I expend more mental rather than physical energy these days, this endowed professorship is essentially a different spin on what a trophy can look like at my age and my career stage. 
And this particular honor will always be memorable to me because of the history that I shared surrounding and leading up to this distinction. As I look over my life, it amazes me that similar to today's honor, many of my greatest opportunities were not initially on my radar. For example, I chose engineering because I was introduced to it in high school through a program designed to expose female sophomores who excelled in math and science to this world of engineering. I learned about the different branches of engineering through that program, and biomedical engineering resonated for me at that time. I chose MIT because my brother <laughs> was flipping through a magazine one day, which contained an MIT ad, and casually mentioned, since you're interested in engineering, you should apply and go to this school. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Great advice. <laughs> and the high school I attended, I really have to credit that to my mother, who is no longer with us. I wish she could be here today to see the fruits of her toil, labor, and sacrifices. She had the wisdom to supplement my schoolwork and summers with preparation for the Brooklyn Technical High School entrance exam, which is very much like the SATs. Fast forward to my choice to be a professor. I credit that to my graduate advisor, Greg Trahey, who recommended it to me when I was completing graduate school because he said he thought I had what it took to be successful. I wasn't exactly sure what he was referring to at that time, <laughs> but looking back, I can see what he saw. So all of these events, fit under the umbrella of me being honored to achieve something that was not initially on my radar when I started my pursuit. In all of these experiences, my initial ignorance has led to bliss, and my natural curiosity has always been a major driving factor for me. It is now my pleasure to apply this curiosity to healthcare challenges for a living. This is what I've been doing before I became a professor, and certainly before being awarded the John C. Malone professorship. And it is what I intend to continue doing as long as I am in this profession. So I will certainly treat the professorship as a gift from my favorite uncle. <laughs> there are so many ways that my unique set of skills and background can be employed to help under this broad healthcare umbrella from developing next generation ultrasound systems to making surgery safer with photoacoustic imaging, to improving technology designs and healthcare resource allocations for cancer patients. These are the multiple ways in which my research will fundamentally alter healthcare systems around the world. I'd like to end by saying thanks to several key individuals who have helped to make this moment possible, including but not limited to John C. Malone himself for his thoughtful bequest to the university, my dean, Ed Schlesinger, my department chair at the time, Andreas Andreu, and my mentor at the time, Jerry Prince, for their distinct roles in granting and informing me of this honor and for the extraordinary vision to put this all together and to really emphasize the importance of healthcare and engineering and making it a major part of the university's vision going forward. And thank you as well for making all of this possible, Provost Kumar. I also thank my former department chair, Ralph Etienne Cummings, who could not be here today, but strongly advocated to hire me as an assistant professor, then followed up with providing a very supportive environment, intellectual freedom, and opportunities for growth, which all helped to make this moment possible. To all of my students, past and present, I thank you too. And I invite you to stand so that others can see who you are. And also wave to the cameras in the back as well Yes. <laughs> so I, I encourage you to maintain your curiosity and drive. I especially thank my graduate students in the Pulse Lab for joining me on this journey. 
even though I was just getting started with my lab at the time, you are each pioneers in your own right, helping to set the tone for Pulse Lab students to come. Some of you are preparing to graduate with your PhDs this year, specifically Allison, Michelle, and Edu. It's amazing what we built together. So now let's change the world together. To my collaborators, many at the School of Medicine who are probably watching online, thanks for your critical role in making our research ideas and contributions to healthcare bigger and better than any of us could have imagined independently. To my colleagues and staff of the Electrical and Computer Engineering Department, the Biomedical Engineering Department, the Computer Science Department, as well as faculty and staff in the Laboratory for Computational and Sensing, Computational Sensing and Robotics, where I did my postdoc, and the Malone Center for Engineering and Healthcare. I'd ask you to stand as well. I have words to share with you, and I want the audience to know who I'm, I'm talking to. So don't be shy. ECE, BME, CS. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And also wave to the cameras in the back so those online can see you. <laughs> yes. I am grateful to be surrounded by supportive and inspirational colleagues and staff like yourselves. Thanks for allowing me to be me, to speak my mind and freely share my opinions. I believe that innovation and growth thrives on these qualities and that you all possess them and have allowed me to strengthen them as a faculty member here. To my friends in the Dean's office, the development office, the provost's office, and the communications office. I see a little less of you here, I guess, because there are not that many to begin with in comparison uh, to the faculty, colleagues, and staff, but could you stand as well? And wave to the audience. Yeah, Tim, Darlene, everyone. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Yes, so to you all, I thank you for the many helpful conversations, the publicity, the Discovery and Catalyst Awards from the university, the support with external funding opportunities, that's specifically Tim, thank you, and even the introduction to academic Twitter, something I would have never thought to partake of on my own. I also thank my church family and friends in multiple states for their consistent presence on this journey. I see one such person here, <laughs> but I know many are watching online too. I won't put the person on the spot unless she wants to stand, okay? <laughs> All right, so to my family, uh, fam church family and friends, thank you for supporting me on this journey and for your consistent presence and for helping me to maintain my faith in an omnipotent and omnipresent God. The role of faith in science is not often discussed, but it remains a large part of who I am. I also thank my current pastor for being a spiritual leader for my 10 years of living in Baltimore. I also thank my brother Abdul and his beautiful family. Would you like to stand? And and wave to the camera, Abdul, Angela, Elijah, and Gaby. Look at them, so beautiful. <laughs> so as a side note, I was about Gabriel's age when I fell in love with math. Yeah, Gaby. <laughs> and I was Elijah's age when I declared to my family that I wanted to be a scientist. So those are ages four and six, respectively. My brother and I are similarly two years separated in age. And in addition to informing me about MIT, my brother also used to let me do his math homework with him, <laughs> which was always way more interesting than my own. <laughs> so thank you all for the encouragement along each step of this journey. <laughs> 
I must also thank my mother, who had the remarkable wisdom and foresight to help me prepare for this moment, although she is no longer with us to celebrate with us. And I'm thankful to my aunts and uncles, who are welcome to stand if they wish, but I won't put you on the spot in case you don't, um, who have supported me along the way and filled in gaps in times of need, just like today. Thank you. I also thank the extension of my family unit in the form of cousins, <laughs> some of which we've lost along the way, but their support has been instrumental as well. And of course, last but not, certainly not least, I thank my husband, Ronaldo, who has stood by my side and been a constant source of unconditional love and support since the day we met. <laughs> thank you, boo. <laughs> so in closing, the scientific journey of discovery takes a village. The individuals I've named are part of my village. If you're here today, you are a part of my village. Even if I did not ask you to stand or call you by name, because time is short, but my memory is not, and I'm grateful for the role that each and every one of you have played in making this moment possible. There's a proverb that says, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. I'm interested in going far, and I'd like us all to do so together. So to you, my village, I say, this is our moment, this is our time. This is our shared success. Let's move forward together. Thank you. Thank you, Daisy. Okay. We have one more person. Thank you, Baizi, for those inspiring words. I'd like now to introduce uh, Professor Alexis Battle, uh, Professor of um, Biomedical Engineering and Computer Science, as well as Director of the Malone Center for Engineering and Healthcare. Thank you. So first of all, I want to offer just a huge congratulations to you, Baizi. Um, this is wonderful. Um, so I only recently have become the director for the Malone Center. In fact, I, I don't officially start until September. Um, but I, I will tell why I decided to take that position and, and first of all begin by thanking John Malone for his incredible generosity. Uh, the Malone building was also the first building that I sat in here at Hopkins. And now I'm just absolutely thrilled to be part of the Malone Center itself and to be taking the directorship and the reason echoes why I came to Hopkins in the first place, which is that I'm deeply passionate about seeing technology, math, engineering, really play a role in how we treat patients in healthcare. So that's, that's why I'm here today, but I'm also here because of Baizi. And I've seen Baizi's career grow over the years. She probably didn't know that I was paying attention at the time, but she is just one of the most impressive faculty that I have seen while I've been here. When she said this might be just one of a list of awards, she's not kidding. If you see her list of awards, it's absurd. It's just, it's just amazing. So, um, but you know, awards are just one thing. And really what impressed me about her is her incredible bravery in innovating in science and her deep passion to using her science and her engineering abilities, you know, her given abilities to make a difference. And so with that, I really am going to keep it very short and just say thank you to Baizi for being a faculty member that's inspired me to be here, to be part of the Malone Center, to be part of Hopkins, to thank Hopkins for supporting somebody as amazing as she is, and again, to thank John Malone for his generosity in supporting the university, the center, and her professorship. Congratulations, Baizi. Thank you very much, Alexis. Now, Baizi, if you would join me again. Um, this is, as you've heard multiple times, a very richly deserved uh, recognition. And as a small memento of, that, of this event, I'm going to officially present you with this um, 
with his framed uh, certificate that notes that you are the John Malone Professor here at Johns Hopkins University. Congratulations on, for that. Thank you. I would like to thank Provost Kumar for joining us today. I would like to thank all of the speakers today, as well as all of Baizi's colleagues, friends, family who are with us. We will continue our celebration with a reception in the hallway. I think the university does still let us have some refreshments together out in the hallway. Thank you all very much for being here today. Thank you.